Hello, my name is Jack Haddon. I'm a senior reporter with Capacity Media, uh, and I'm delighted to be joined by Mugo here. He's the CEO of uh, Telcom Kenya. Mugo, um, 48 hours ago, you were up stage upstairs, although it probably feels like a lot longer than 48 hours. There's been so much happening here at ITW Africa. Um, but one thing that I found really like interesting from your presentation um, was the idea of meaningful connectivity. Um, obviously, you know this event, ITW Africa, is designed to be talking about connectivity across Africa from a range of different areas. But for you guys, what, what does meaningful connectivity actually mean? Can you just give us like a breakdown of how Telcom Kenya um, interpret that phrase and why it's important to you? Well, Jack, I think, uh, good morning. I think it's clear and uh, evident that connectivity globally is a priority for everybody. But when we talk about meaningful connectivity, in Africa, for instance, we have increasingly high mobile uh, penetration. Mm -hmm. But that is mostly voice. And even at that, we only have about 50% uh, mobile access to mobile uh, devices. Beyond that, in order for people and citizens on this continent, especially the youth, to be able to engage uh, between them, amongst themselves and with the rest of the world, they do need to access the internet. Mm -hmm. And for that, you need access to broadband. And so you do, you do need broadband connectivity, which requires infrastructure, uh, to be laid out, uh, b b both mobile as well as um, uh, fiber infrastructure. Again, and, and, and once you've done that, you do need to have access to devices, to smart devices, which are still quite expensive and are a little out of reach of most people on the continent. So we do need to have to find a way to access smartphones which are inexpensive and which give connectivity to the internet for most uh, the people on the continent. Mm -hmm. And beyond that also, uh, it's one thing to have the device, to have the access, but the capacity to engage. So digital literacy also is an important element that policymakers should look at, you know. Uh, a lot of people now, uh, as we get access to smart devices and to the internet, uh, content being developed on the internet, whether it be educational content, access to healthcare, you know, just access to conveniences, people must also have the capacity digitally to access it and to engage with it. Yeah, no, for sure. I think it makes a lot of sense. And I think really like uh, mobile penetration is one metric that you can look at, but I think more and more we're starting to think of it more as like how are the end users engaging and what infrastructure do they need and what technology do they need to be able to engage with it in a way where you are providing that connectivity. And I think that ties into another point that I found really interesting from your speech, which was, um, was it 60% of the African continent is aged under 25? Under 25, correct. And then by 2100, we're expecting 40% 40 of the global workforce to be in Africa. So correct. youth is massively important and connecting them to the internet and giving them those digital skills is going to be so important to the future of the African continent. So how does that play into the way that you guys are thinking about rolling out your networks? Look, I think um, you're right. I mean, we have 60% of our youth on the continent is below 25 or our population is below mm. 25. Um, and we expect that uh, a good 40% of the global workforce uh, in 2100 will be African or on the continent. Today, as we speak, the median African age is 19, yeah, right? Cool. And so you're talking about demographically a very youthful continent. And uh, it just so happens that these are the people who have the least access uh, uh, to, uh, to data and to the devices we're talking about. So we must find ways to ensure that we, have, we give the youth access mm -hmm. to uh, smart devices, to broadband uh, connectivity, so they can be able to engage in an increasingly changing economy, global economy. Um, we're moving away from the age old, you know, working until you retire at the you know, grand old age of 60 to what we now refer to as a gig economy. Yeah. You know, young people now are multi-talented, have got tremendous variety of options and they want to engage in all the various options. They want to fulfill their full life potential. And so they find they're not interested in being cooped up in a particular role for a particularly long time. And so they get into gigs and uh, technology has facilitated that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, policy and regulation should also follow that. Uh, corporations such as ourselves, companies must also learn how to engage young people in this new kind of engagement and lifestyle where they're able to, uh, uh, to move from one company to another company, specifically following what where their talent takes them. 
uh, when you speak about when, when you talk about 40 percent of the global workforce in 2100 being uh, on the continent it's also obvious that for that 40 percent to be able to be fully engaged they will have to be serving the entire world mm -hmm. and they will you know it will be important for them to serve the world from where they are and so virtual you know virtualization of the professional space is going to be much more of a reality and that would require infrastructure and connectivity yeah makes yeah. sense i was really encouraged by um you mentioned like policy there i was really encouraged that we had the ministry of communications and the uh the digital inclusion fund from the regulators in kenya kind of speaking just after you um two days ago and everyone seems to be on the same page that you need that collaborative environment you need to create um, this ecosystem where innovation can really like develop and that you can move into this single digital market seems to be like a big theme that came out of that. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about Look, what that is and why it's important? I think, Jack, I think it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very um, gratified that uh, the new administration, it's one year old now actually, mm. um, has made a point of ensuring that digital transformation is an important plank of the administration's um, program over the next five years, yeah. uh, what they call the bottom-up uh, economy, economic transformation. And digital transformation is one of the five critical pillars. And, that in, and, 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 and within it, there is a clear intent to lay out tremendous amount of infrastructure, 100,000 kilometers of fiber, making sure that we have mobile um, broadband connectivity across the entire country, uh, ensuring that we have got government services across the board, all government services accessible digitally and virtually. Uh, and the program was already started in earnest. Uh, the Ministry of um, uh, Digital, uh, of ICT and, and Digital Communications uh, has been very, very forward leading uh, in terms of launching Wi-Fi hotspots across the country and beginning to ensure that the program of, you know, 50% of it, of laying the fiber uh, undertaken by the government and 50% by the private sector all because there's a clear understanding that the future we're headed into is going to be increasingly virtual. Mm -hmm. People across the world are going to be able to engage with each other from across the globe virtually. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. If, if the, is there anything that you think that the ministry um, or the regulators could be doing more to support the um, telcos and the technology providers within, within Kenya to kind of help us get towards this um, greater connected land? <laughs> Look, I think that as far as policy and regulation are, is concerned, obviously Kenya is way ahead of the curve. You know, that's why we have, you know, mobile money has done very well in this country. Um, but having said that, um, it's important that the policy and regulatory framework facilitates innovation, mm -hmm. you know. On the one hand, not to, you know, stifle it, you know, using brick and mortar policy and regulatory mindsets. Um, but on the other hand as well, making sure that before they rush into formulating policy, whether it be uh, taxation policy, utilization policy, that they understand what's happening first. It, and it takes a while before a regulator or a policymaker understands where a particular innovation or technology is headed. Mm. And once that is understood and how that facilitates the general economy is understood, then the laws that would hinder faster progress should be removed. So as I think I mentioned when I was talking a couple of days ago, uh, we need to move away from the necessity of having documentation, having to be uh, physically, you know, yeah. physical uh, signatures being a necessity before you can get, you know, important access to important government documents or licensing or permitting, you know. We could start with simple um, areas uh, such as those. Of course, um, uh, safety, security, uh, data protection, cyber security are all concerns for everybody. Uh, but I think we need to balance ensuring that you know we have cyber, proper cyber security, data protection, with ensuring that we are also propelling innovation that will make it possible for this youth yeah. we're talking about to be fully engaged in the economic future. I think the the M Pesa is a great example, right? Because like the um, the regulators were saying when they were initially presented with the idea. They were a little bit like kind of, well, what's all this? Like, why are the telcos getting involved in this? But as they kind of took the time to understand it and see the benefits and work out how this can really like come to be reality, it all started to make sense. And then the policy was like shaped around that. So I guess more of the same would be what we've. Yeah, that is true. I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, mobile money is one very great area. It is a fantastic example of where Kenyan regulators and policymakers did the right thing. Mm -hmm. And that is why today you find that. Uh, uh, we had one uh, initial mobile money platform, but now we have several. Tcash yeah, Telcom, Tcash. you know, um, and some of our competitors. You know, we have a lot of uh, 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 payment service providers 
uh, in this country and in this region, and increasingly a lot more innovative mobile money platforms um, uh, are, are, are coming up, such as Tcash. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, coming back to specifically to what we pl plan to do in Telcom, I think uh, as a carrier of carriers, and that's why this conference, ITW, is so important for us, and that it's being hosted in Nairobi mm -hmm. uh, and in Africa for the first time. Uh, Telcom Kenya uh, is the leading carrier uh, in this region, and we intend to, with the support of um, uh, policymakers, regulators, to enhance our role as a carrier of carriers and our role as you know giving access to this youth um, uh, to, a, to, to, to a platform in which to engage technologically with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, the, the ITW Africa kind of like strapline, if you will, is accelerated connectivity in Africa. We've obviously spoken quite a lot about that in the last 15 minutes or so. But um, I guess anything else, like just before we, we kind of sign off, anything else that you'd mention around what Telcom are doing to deliver that accelerated connectivity? Well, well I think um, uh, to go along with the theme of ITW, uh, accelerating connectivity in Africa, a single digital market, which is what I, what the theme of my presentation on um, a couple of days ago, it's critical, you know. We have in the brick and mortar world, the you know opening up of markets, you know common markets. You know we have the African Continental Free Trade um, Agreement, which is to encourage all 50 odd countries, uh, African countries, to open their borders to free commerce, freedom of movement of people. That needs to be buttressed by digital infrastructure, mm -hmm. because you know you still have great expanses and having a seamless virtual connectivity across the continent will only enhance uh, the growth of this continent uh, economically and uh, be able to enhance opportunities that young people will have. And I think our part as Telcom Kenya is to, be, to, is to play the part of building on that infrastructure, our fiber infrastructure, our um, uh, landing stations, which help us connect Africa with the entire world through the undersea cables, um, as, as well as uh, build, help build capacity, digital literacy uh, in, in, uh, on this continent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amazing. Well, Migo, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us. Thank you. Um, and if uh, you enjoyed this interview, make sure to subscribe to the Capacity TV channel. Uh, we'll have plenty more of these coming over the, the next weeks from all the events that we're at. So, yeah, Migo, thanks so much. And thank you. We'll thank you very much. Seeing you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Cheers. Yeah.